Seven, there is a word from the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy and gathered out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. I thank God that he is a loving and steadfast God who takes care of us. I pray that as we come together this morning, that we will lift up his name in worship and praise. I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. I'm in the glory land way, telling the world that safe today. Yes, I'm in the glory land way. Well, I'm in the glory land way. You know I'm in the glory land way. Oh, heaven is nearer and the way growing clearer. For I'm in the glory land way. You ought to listen to Call the gospel call to well and then get in the glory land way and wanderers come home oh hasten to obey I'm in the glory land way I'm in the glory land way you know that 
I'm in the glory land away. Oh, heaven is nearer and the way grow with clearer for I'm in the glory land way. Onward I go, rejoicing in his love. I'm in the glory land way. Soon I shall see him in that home above, for I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm glad I'm, I'm in the glory land way. You know heaven is nearer and the way grow with clearer, for I'm in the glory land way. Well, I'm in the glory land way. You know I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is nearer and the way grow with clearer for I'm in, in the glory land. Yes, I'm in the church of Christ. You know that I'm in the church of Christ. Yes, and heaven is nearer and the way groweth clearer. For I'm in the church of Christ. Yeah, I'm in the church of Christ. You know I'm in the church of Christ. For I'm in the church of God. This morning's scripture reading will come from the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verses 15 through 18. Again, that's the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verses 15 through 18. And the Bible reads, And she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. May the Lord do so to me, and more also if anything but death parts me from you. And when Naomi saw that he she was saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more. May the reader may the reading have a blessing to the hearers and doers of his word. Let us now join together for prayer. Let's go to our heavenly Father in prayer. Our Father and our God, which art in heaven, Father, we just come thanking you for this opportunity and this privilege you've given us to gather at your feet just one more time, Father. We just thank you for being such a loving and a kind and a generous God who does all things well. Father, if there's something that separates us from you this morning, Father, we pray that you will remove those things from us, Father, as far as the east is from the west. Remember those things no more, Father, and help us to grow from each uh, obstacle that causes us to stumble, Father. Let us be stronger for you uh, for it, Father. Father, we pray again that you would just continue to bless uh, the congregation here at the Eastland Street Church of Christ, Father. You would just bless us to, to be more like you, Father, each day you allow us to see, Father. We're mindful of the many who are sick and shed in and our number, Father. We just pray that you would be with them, that you would help them, Father, that you would just build them up with what they stand in need of, Father. And we pray for the hands that care for them, Father, that you would just bless them with patience and endurance, Father. Again, Father, we just thank you for this day to be able to gather at your feet just one more time, Father, and we pray everything that's said and done here this morning would come up to you, Father, as a, a, a sweet fragrance, Father, pleasing and acceptable unto thee, Father. Father, again, we love you and we just praise you, Father, and we just pray that you would be with the speaker of the hour, Father, that you would just give him a ready recollection of those things in which he has studied. And Father, ready our ears to hear the message, Father, not just hear the message, Father, but to put it into action into our everyday lives, Father. We thank you again just for blessing us, for being with us, and for strengthening us, Father. You know what we all stand in need of this morning, Father, 
And all those within the sound of my voice, Father, we just pray that you would just bless them with what they stand in need of, Father. We know that you are able, Father, and we just thank you in advance for doing so. Again, Father, we just ask that you would just forgive us for all of our shortcomings. Just be with us this day and each day, Father, that you allow us to see, Father. We love you, and we praise you, kind Father. We do offer this and all praises in the almighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Hallelujah, praise you.
thankful for those that are here on this morning. Uh, those who have tuned in, we're so pre appreciative for you uh, in joining us and remaining patient with us on this morning. If you happen to be visiting with us, we are proud to have you as a part of this worship as well. I want to call your attention this morning to the book, the Old Testament book of Ruth. Chapter 1, verses 15 through 18. The Old Testament book of Ruth, chapter 1, verses 15 through 18. Uh, we have been studying a series of lessons under the banner of Destination X. And we have come to understand that our destination uh, how, how the choices that we make, uh, the intentional choices that we make, have a profound effect on where our destination will be eternally. And so here today in the next installment of this series, we find ourselves in Ruth chapter 1, verse number 15. And these words are recorded. Look, Naomi said to her, Your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. You should do the same. But Ruth replied, Don't ask me to leave you and turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will become my people, and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me severely if I allow anything but death to separate us. When Naomi said that, saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said, nothing more. We want to use for our subject this morning very simply no turning back. No turning back. When we consider the text that we've shared with you this morning, this text is often quoted or read in weddings and we pay careful attention during our wedding ceremonies and the part of the scripture, it says, your people will become my people. While this scripture is helpful and helpful in weddings, I want to call our attention back to its original context. In this text, there was a time of famine, and the family of a man by the name of Elimelech, he, Elimelech, had passed on, and his family was seeking a better life during this famine. Famine. They were seeking life away from Yahweh's promised land. They found themselves in the land of Moab. And when they went to Moab, they found only death and emptiness. They would find contentment only by returning home to Bethlehem. When you think in terms of Bethlehem, we understand that 
The word Bethlehem means house of bread. Isn't it ironic as well that the name of Naomi means sweet, but she would call herself or refer to herself as bitter. Why? Because she was far away from home. And as a result of leaving the place that God would have them to be, her life would be filled with bitterness. When we think in terms of Ruth, Ruth is a lasting example of us today of what happens when we stay the course with God. When you think of Ruth, remember that Ruth herself was a Moabite. She wasn't a Jew. She was considered an alien of God's covenant, uh, a hated foreign nation. Yet she would be blessed by a man by the name of Boaz. Why? Because she made the decision that Yahweh was going to be her God and that there would be no turning back. As a result of Ruth choosing wisely, choosing the God that we serve called Yahweh, God would bless her. She, in turn, we would see, would be more faithful to the covenant of God than many of God's chosen people called the Jews. Why? Because uh, Ruth was one who understood what it meant to stay the course. She understood the concept of no turning back. Uh, it reminds me, Ruth reminds me of a song that we often sing. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. When we look at Ruth this morning, the first thing I wanna show you with her is her testimony. When you look in Ruth chapter one and verse number 15 through 18, we see that uh, Naomi, her mother-in-law, was trying to cover up Oprah, her, had given up her sister-in-law and left the rest of the family. But when I look at Ruth, Ruth was prepared to stand up. When I think about her, she refused to listen to her mother-in-law's pleas or to follow her sister-in-law back to their homeland. Why? Because she had come to trust in the God of Israel. When I think about Ruth, she made it clear. She said, uh, I don't know what you're going to do, but this God called Yahweh that you have exposed me to, he is now my God. Uh, I know that when we came here, he was just your God, but I see and I have watched on the sideline the faithfulness of this God called Yahweh. And yes, mother, I love you, but in the midst of loving you, I've also learned to love your God. Uh, when I think about this idea, she says, uh, your people, in verse number 16, she says, your people, are going to be my people. Watch verse number 16 of Ruth 1. But Ruth replied, don't ask me to leave you or in turn back. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. I'm glad to know that Ruth understood what it means to have a relationship with God, but also not only with God, but understanding that because she had a relationship with God, she also shared a relationship with God's children. My friends, I want us to understand today, 
We need more people like Ruth that understand that because each of us are children of God, we are brothers and sisters in Christ. And that relationship goes farther than just what we can see here on earth. Uh, in a much greater way, the way that we love our blood brothers and sisters, that relationship in Christ ought to be that much stronger. Why? Because we understand, like Ruth did, that uh, by Yahweh, you being my God, uh, Ruth's people, uh, Naomi's people, they're going to be my people. And because of that, uh, Ruth understood that she was making a sound decision. When I think about Ruth, I remember also in Ruth chapter 1 and verse number 13, uh, we see here that rather than return to her family, Ruth chooses to leave her homeland to live uh, the difficult life of a widow in a foreign land. Watch verse number 13. Would you wait for them to grow up and refuse to marry someone else? No, of course not, my daughters. Things are far more bitter for me than for you because the Lord himself has raised his fist against me. When I think about Naomi, Naomi is saying, Ruth, you need to go back home to your people because things are bad for us here. Y'all, I find it uh, encouraging and enlightening that when I look at Ruth, who was a Moabite outside of the covenant of Israel, she has more faith in this God that she learned from the sidelines than her mother-in-law, Naomi, who was a Jew, an Israelite. And because of this, I want you to see something here. Because she had more faith, she had more confidence in God than even the one that was responsible for bringing her to God in the first place. I want to tell you something, my friends. God works in mysterious ways. And so when we learn and see what God is able to do, what God is about, we need more people like Ruth that say, you know what? I know that Yahweh wasn't my God, but I've seen the faithfulness of this God. I've seen the power of this God. Yeah, mother-in-law, you are the one responsible for bringing me to him. But guess what? My faith, and she didn't say this in word, but she said it indeed. Mother-in-law, uh, your God has become my, my God. And you know, I'm not just talking about Yahweh. I'm ready and I'm willing to lay everything on the line for Yahweh. My friends, let us understand that Ruth was making a great decision. It was a decision based upon faith. Why do you say that, preacher? When in this land where they found themselves, you got to understand that there was no social security benefits in that land. <coughs> there was no Medicaid in that land. There was no Medicare in that land. There were no pensions in that land. And so the fact that Ruth says, I know that being a widow in this land, in this time, is a dangerous thing. I have come to understand that it's more dangerous to be without Yahweh than to be without social benefits in this land. A lesson for you and I today. I don't care what happens in this land, as long as we have God, as long as we make up in our mind, I've decided to follow Jesus and there's no turning back. There's no turning back. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Why? Because with Jesus, there's no turning back. Then I see next of all, that Ruth says that 
your God is my God. Now, when you look in our English translation, uh, we see it translated, Ruth says, your God shall be my God. Why? Because when we say God, uh, we are referring to the God called Yahweh. And so when I look in the Hebrew translation, uh, it says it very succinctly. Ruth says, your Yahweh shall be my God. Your Yahweh, she uses the Hebrew uh, 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 word for God. She says, your Yahweh shall be my God. In other words, she wasn't just making a rash decision and saying, yeah, I don't know what your God stands for. I don't know what he's about, but uh, your God, whoever he is, whatever he does, yeah, I'm going to just stay with you, mama, and your God's going to be my God. When we look at the Hebrew, we understand that Ruth has a better understanding. She knows that Yahweh isn't just some God. She knows that Yahweh is the God. And so she says, as a result, wherever you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me severely. Again, when you look at the Hebrew, uh, she says, may Yahweh punish me severely if I follow anything but death to separate us. When I look at this, I see that Ruth is one that takes her faith seriously. When I think about myself, when you think about yourself, how seriously do we take our faith in Yahweh, the God of heaven? And so because she takes her faith seriously, Ruth is one. She says, I am determined to stay. This isn't a half-hearted committed. I am determined to stay with Yahweh. I am determined to stay with you. Uh, I ask you this morning, church and friends, as we navigate the struggles of life today, the uncertainty of life today, are you and I like Ruth? Are we determined to stay? Uh, are you, uh, I know we had technical issues, but are you determined to stay with God regardless of what comes up? When I think about Ruth being determined to stay, I see in Ruth chapter one and verse number 18, the Bible puts it like this. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, watch this, when Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said nothing more. Naomi being the child of Yahweh, and now Ruth has said, you know what? You can say whatever you want to, mama. Yahweh is now going to be my God as well. And as much as I love you, I understand that outside of Yahweh, there is no hope. Outside of Yahweh, there is no vaccine for sin. Outside of Yahweh, there is no way to heaven. Uh, if I'm going to make it to heaven, I've got to be like Ruth, and I've got to be determined to stay. I don't know what's going to happen with COVID. I don't know what's going to happen when the flu and the COVID get together. But you know what? I'm not concerned about that. I'm like Yahweh. I'm I like Ruth. I'm determined to stay with Yahweh. When I look at this, I understand. You know, we understand that there are going to be times in our life when we have to wrestle with challenges. Uh, somebody right now is probably wrestling with a boss that you're saying, I can't stand him or her another day. Uh, maybe it's a relationship that is suddenly uh, in pain or is hurting. Maybe it's a dream of yours that's run out of resources. 
Maybe you've moved somewhere and your move has failed to meet your expectation. My friends, when you face difficulties, it's natural to reconsider uh, your decisions that you've made. You might ask questions like, should I take my chances and quit this job and look for something else? You know, uh, uh, then some might say, my spouse has had an affair. Is it time for me to move on? Uh, and then there might be one that says, I don't know if I'm cut out to run a business. Should I cut my losses before things get any worse? I want you to understand that with each of these examples and with most other of life's great choices, you might find yourself at a crossroad and find that it's time for you to, to decide, should I stay or should I walk away? My question to you this morning is, are you choosing to give up because it's the right thing to do? Or is it because leaving would be the easier thing to do? Sometimes uh, we don't need to do what's easier to do. Sometimes God calls us to do those things which are harder to do. But the only way that I know what I'm supposed to do is that I have a good relationship with God. I'm talking with him. I'm in communion with him. See, a lot of folk, they wait till they get in a bind. They get between a rock and a hard place. They and uh, they, they hadn't talked to God in all that time and saying, I'm going to do this. I'm going to start this. I'm going to marry him. I'm going to marry her. I'm going to hear. I'm going to buy this. And guess what? They haven't talked to God all the way up into getting in that crack. But now all of a sudden, they want to talk to God and say, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'm talking to God now and I can't hear what he's saying. See, in order to talk to God, you've got to uh, form your relationship with him. You got to stay with him. You got to be in the word. You got to pray. You got to pray more than when you picking up a chicken wing. You got to pray more than when you come to church with us on Sunday morning. It's got to be a continuous thing. And I tell you, the more time that you spend with somebody in a relationship, the more in tune you are with what they're trying to say and what they mean. No wonder we don't always understand what God's wanting us to do because we've done all of this stuff, gotten ourselves in cracks, in bad places, and then all of a sudden we want to say, God, come help me. What do you want me to do? Uh, well, i tell you one thing. Uh, the first thing that sometimes we need to do when we realize that we've gotten out of step with God and now we're ready for him to help us. The first thing I need to do is learn to humble myself in the sight of the Lord. I'm not going to ask God for, Lord, help me to see this. Lord, what would you have me to do? The first thing I need to do is say, Lord, have mercy on me. I've gotten myself in this situation. And Lord, I probably wouldn't be here if I had been talking to you all along the line. But Lord, I want you to understand that I'm confessing my sin. I was hard-headed. I was rebellious. I didn't want to do what you wanted. I just wanted to do me. But Lord, I'm coming home. Lord, clean me up. Lord, fix me up. And Lord, I know that if you clean me up, if you fix me up, your grace and your mercy is going to bring me through. Am I making sense this morning? Well, when I think about this, the heart of this lesson, when I look at Ruth, 
Ruth reminds me, she reminds you that when we decide to follow God, we don't need to be quitters. Well, what do you mean by that, preacher? When you decide to follow God, don't be a quitter, be a finisher. Be someone that sees their relationship through to the end with God. Well, uh, do you have any scripture for that? Well, I'm so glad you asked that. I don't know what to do. Look at Luke chapter 9 and verse number 57. Uh, the scripture reminds us, don't be a quitter, be a finisher. Luke chapter 9. Verse number 57, the Bible says it like this. As they were walking along, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. Ah, but Jesus replied, foxes have dens to live in and birds have nests. But the Son of Man has no place even to lay his head. He said to another person, come and follow me. The man agreed. But, he said, y'all don't see that. The man agreed. But, you know, the man says, I'll follow you. He says, but, you know, like us sometimes, the man agreed. But he said, Lord, first, let me return home and bury my father. But Jesus told him, let the spiritually dead bury their own dead. Your duty is to go and preach about the kingdom of God. Another said, yes, Lord, I will follow you. But first, let me say goodbye to my family. Jesus told him, anyone who puts a hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of heaven. Why are you not fit for the kingdom? Because you are one that starts something, but you're not willing to finish it. You remember you came down that aisle. I didn't make you come down that aisle. The preacher asked, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God? I didn't make you make the confession. You made the confession on your own. And because you made the confession, because you repented of your sins, because you went down in the watery grave of baptism, you need to be like Ruth and say, your God will be my God wherever you go. I will go wherever Jesus sends me. That's where I'm going to go. I can't wait till it's convenient here on earth, but I've got to do what God says while I'm able to do it. I read a scripture somewhere that said that we ought to work while it's day because when night comes, no man can work. Why? Because when you get with Jesus, there's no turning back. You got to stay the course. When the waters get choppy, you got to hold on tight. Don't jump overboard because if you jump overboard, you're going to drown in this thing called life. My friends, I understand. Everybody gets tired, don't we? We all get tired. But you know, when we think about God and his word, he makes some promises to us. Do you remember Isaiah chapter 40 and verse number 30 and 31? Regardless of who we are, you're going to get tired. I know somebody says right now, I'm tired of watching church on TV. I'm tired of see, hearing the service, not seeing my brothers and sisters. I'm tired of being six feet apart from everybody. I want to hug somebody. I want to touch somebody. Y'all, the scripture reminds us that everybody gets tired sometimes. Notice what he says, even the youth shall faint and be weary, meaning the young folk are going to get tired, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those, y'all don't see this, but those who wait on the Lord 
shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Uh, Y'all, we've got to wait on the Lord. I don't know how long we've got to wait, but that's all we have time to do is to just wait on the Lord. Your time, Lord, we got to talk to him. Lord, help us. Your timing isn't my timing, but Lord, I trust more in you than I do in myself. Why? Because you are the God that transcends time. Lord, you are the God that was on the scene before I walked on this earth. God, you are the God that will continue to be God even when my body's laying in the cold, cold clay. Why? Because you are God and above you there is no other. And because of that, I remember and I tell myself, I remind myself that harvest time is coming, y'all. We got to stay the course. We can't turn back. James puts it like this in James chapter 5 and verse number 7 and 8. Dear brothers and sisters, be patient as you wait for the Lord's return. Dear brothers, be patient as you wait for the Lord's return. Somebody's waiting for the pandemic to end. Somebody's waiting to get their vaccine. Somebody's waiting for the schools to open back. Somebody's waiting to be able to go back to the ball game. Somebody's waiting for something. But I'm telling you this, James says, in all your waiting for these things of the earth, be patient. Why? Because there's something else greater, something else better that you're waiting on. And you're in that being, you're waiting on the Lord's return. Don't get so fixated on waiting for the pandemic to end that you forget that ultimately what you're waiting on is for the Lord to return. I don't know about you, but I have it fixated in my mind. I can see clearly that the things of this earth are not going to stand forever. I remember in the word of God, I remember God said that it won't be water, but fire next time. It reminds me that when you see a little, uh, when you see a wild forest fire out in California, when you see Australia burning, let me tell you something. Remember the word of God because a wildfire in California, Australia burning up, that won't be anything but a little brush fire when Jesus comes back and this whole thing is on fire. Let us stop and think more soberly Think more vigilantly, see things spiritually and not physically and carnally. I've got to build my thing, hopes on things eternal. As uh, the songwriter used to say, you got to hold to God's unchanging hand. Galatians 6 and verse number 9 puts it this way. Let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we don't grow weary, if we don't turn back. I understand that when I think of Ruth, and I'm closing this morning, when I think of Ruth, Ruth was one that said, I've made up my mind to follow Yahweh, and there's no turning back. Regardless of that, I don't know where it's going to get me, but I know that God is on the throne. I know that Yahweh is able. If Ruth, y'all being a Moabite, can take and cling to God and see that God is the way to go, surely I can see the same thing. And y'all, when you hook up with God and you stay hooked up with God, you know that good things are going to happen. She stayed with God. And guess what? God sent a man by the name of Boaz, a Jew, to be her husband. And as a result of that, 
Ruth being one that didn't have anybody, she was brought into a secure relationship. She was no longer one by herself, but she was drafted into the covenant of God. And she had a man by the name of Boaz. I'm so glad that the story doesn't stop there. Because when I look in Matthew chapter 1 and verse number 3 through 5, I see what happens with Ruth because she said that Yahweh is going to be my God. When you say that Yahweh is going to be your God and you hold the line with Yahweh, Yahweh goes on record and testifies to your faithfulness. Matthew chapter 1 and verse number 3. In the lineage of Jesus Christ, when Matthew shows the birthright of Jesus, who the ancestors of Jesus Christ were, I find it interesting that when I look in verse number three, Judah was the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez was the father of Hezron. Hezron was the father of of Ram. Ram was the father of Amenadab, and Amenadab was the father of Nashon. Nashon was the father of Salmon. And watch verse number five. Salmon was the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Y'all don't see what I'm seeing. This same man called Boaz that would later hook up with Ruth. He was in the lineage, but I'm glad to know that the lineage doesn't stop there. Boaz was the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Y'all don't see that. Boaz was the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Y'all, God is able to bless your stuff if you hook up with him. How in the world did Ruth get up in the bloodline, in the lineage of Jesus Christ? And she's a Moab, she's a Moabite, and not even a Jew. It goes on to let me know that when you make Yahweh your God, God will take care of you. And then he'll turn around and show how you bless somebody else and how your faithfulness had a profound effect on the history of mankind. Y'all, because Ruth did what she was supposed to do, she ended up being a great, great, great something grandmother to none other than Jesus Christ. That's my lesson today. When you stay with God, when you make up in your mind that I'm not going to turn around, I'm going to stay with God. God, my friends, will bless you. I hope, I hope that I've said something that will help us along during this week. Be like Ruth. Be like Ruth. Your Yahweh will be my Yahweh. Your people will be my people. Wherever you go, I will go. Why? Because we're being directed by the same God Amen. called Yahweh. Amen. If you're under the sound of my voice and Yahweh isn't your God, Amen. you need to make Yahweh your God. Amen. The way you do so is come, you've heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, the son of Yahweh. Believe it with all of your heart. Repent of your sins. Confess your faith in Jesus Christ and be buried with him in baptism for the remission of your sins. If you remain faithful to the end, the same way that Yahweh provided an inheritance for Ruth, he will do the same for you. If you strayed away, come back to Yahweh while you're able. Come right now while we sing this song. sweet, I know.
is now time for us to turn our attention to the offering and communion. Um, the scripture gives us uh, guidance on where we need to uh, go to for the communion. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. But at this time, we want to give everyone the opportunity to get their kids ready, and then we'll read the scriptures. For I have received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he come. Let us pray for the communion. Our Father, which art in heaven, we come this morning thanking you for the ultimate sacrifice that you made on our behalf. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We remember his death. As we remember his death, his burial, and his resurrection, we uh, eat of this bread, which represents his body, and the fruit of the vine, which represents his blood. We pray that we would do so in a worthy manner. For it's in your blessed name that we do pray and give thanks. Amen. Now we will turn our attention to the offering. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, the point is this. The person who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the person who sows generously will also reap generously. Each person should do as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or out of compulsion, since God loves a cheerful giver. Let us give thanks for the offering. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the many blessings that you have seen fit to bestow upon us. We pray that we would give back a portion of what you have so richly blessed us with, and that these funds that we collect might be used for the edification and the upkeeping of our kingdom. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we will turn our attention to the church announcements. We'd like to welcome everyone who joined us this morning for our Sunday morning service on the website or on Facebook. Now time for our announcements. Community kit distribu distribution, excuse me. We will be distributing communion on Saturday, August 22nd from 12 o'clock until 1 o'clock p.m. in a North Overflow room. As you please, I mean North Overflow parking lot. As you please, stay in your cars as you drive through to pick up your communion. That's going to be August 22nd. That's from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock p.m. Online giving. All online giving to Eastland must be done using the Eastland app or at eastlandcoc.org backslash give. The other online giving tools we previously used have been discontinued. As always, you can mail or drop off your offering in the church secured and camera monitor box here at the building. Eastland game night. Ask you please mark your calendars for Friday, August 28th, 7 o'clock p.m. for our online upcoming Eastland Game Night. The link to join the session is posted on our Eastland membership app and the church website. So please join us August 28th, 7 p.m. Eastland Game Night. How may we serve you? As COVID-19 pandemic continues, we realize these are challenging times for everyone. As always, we encourage you to contact your reach group leader if you need to talk to someone or just need assistance, as you see on the screen, you can call Charles Forbright Jr. at 817-757-6412, Travis Gregsby Sr. at 630-715-6796, and George Neal at 
6240. Once again, thank you for joining us this morning. And we're going to leave you with a verse, with a verse of a song and a closing prayer by Brother Kenneth Flowers. I'm going to Most wise and eternal Heavenly Father, we come to you once again just to say thank you. Thank you for the many blessings that you've bestowed upon us. Thank you for all the things that you've done for us, those things that we, that we aren't deserving of. We just thank you for doing them for us anyway. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we just ask that you would just continue to watch over us, protect us, guide us, and keep us safe. Bless us as we go throughout this up and coming week. We thank you for that wonderful message from Brother Fulbright. We just ask that we would just take those things that we've learned and apply them to our everyday lives this week and try to do with those things that will draw us closer to you. Heavenly Father, we just ask that you would just bless all the things that are going on around us. Bless this storm that we're weathering. Bless those that have been affected by COVID and other things that are going on. And we just ask that you continue to just walk with us, yeah. continue to hold our hands, continue to be with us through every step of the way. Heavenly Father, we just ask that you would watch over us, guide us, and keep us safe throughout this up and coming week. Let's continue to bless us with your mercy, your grace, your forgiveness, and your understanding. It's these and all things we ask in your Son Christ's name. Amen. Amen.